This is a beautiful, beautiful question for U.S. Simile. They love this, okay, on the step one and the step two. This is something that we need to check the box off for you in terms of your exam. So before I get into the question, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit the like button. Let's get this to all-time highs. Hit the bell if you want notifications. And find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical, and the link is down below. Now. Let's start the question. 80 year old woman, she was found on the floor by the staircase in her home. And we have a pretty vague vignette, not much to grab onto. And we have these urinalysis findings of two plus blood on dipstick, three to four RBCs per high powered field. So we're just gonna go through our answer choices sequentially here, okay? And I'll explain the urinalysis alongside uh, th these answers. So choice A, acute interstitial nephritis. Wrong fucking answer. And the reason is because you would get eosinophils in your analysis. White blood cells. Okay, you're going to see 20 to 50 plus WBCs, probably powered field, they're eosinophils. Nine, nine times out of 10, the interstitial nephropathy vignette is going to be someone who's been taking NSAIDs, cephalosporins, or beta-lactams. It's an allergy of the kidney. About 50% of stems will give you a rash. You need not have a rash. It's only about 50% and you're gonna have white blood cells in the urine, the eosinophils. One out of 10 vignettes is going to give you a post-renal obstruction. It's not allergic. They'll just give you a post-renal obstruction, and then they're gonna say, what's the diagnosis? The answer is acute interstitial nephropathy, and you'll be able to eliminate the others, okay? So it's weird, but that's your one out of 10. Let's just keep moving forward. Membranous sclomerular nephropathy, wrong answer, because this is a nephrotic syndrome. We're not going to have blood in the urine, and we do here. Membranous glomerular nephropathy, classically due to solid tumors, pancreatic, lung, breast. It can also be due to hepatitis B and C. I've seen both in questions. It can be due to drugs, dapsone, sulfa drugs, gold salts. Uh, gold salts are an antiquated medication for rheumatoid arthritis. I've seen that on, on an old NBME question. Membranous glomerular nephropathy can be primary. Antibodies against phospholipase A2 receptor, we would have a spike in dome appearance on biopsy. The point is, it's not the answer here, and we're not going to spend all day. Let's move forward. Choice C, osteoporosis, wrong answer. Now, this is a very good distractor, okay? You say, well, we have an 8 year old woman who fell. Uh, maybe she has a fracture, okay? But we have a vague vignette. It's not our answer, Okay. Uh, osteoporosis is not going to give you, in and of itself, is not going to give you abnormal urinalysis. And extremely high yield for the U.S. simile is that you know that the biochemical, the biochem, the serum biochemistry for uh, patients with osteoporosis is normal. So calcium normal, phosphate normal, PTH normal. And they'll often give it to you in graph form. They'll have EG... PTH on the y-axis, calcium on the x-axis, letters at different locations, and smack dab in the normal range is what you'd expect for osteoporosis. When you ask students what you should expect for calcium uh, and osteoporosis, they tend to say it's low. Wrong fucking answer, okay? Everything in the normal range. Choice D, papillary necrosis. This is going to be the answer classically for sickle cell patients who have dark urine. Sickle cell plus dark urine, answer equals renal papillary necrosis. Sickle cell plus nephrotic syndrome, there's no blood in the urine, answer equals FSGS, focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. Renal papillary necrosis can also be due to NSAIDs, okay? So uh, the renal papillae, the renal medulla, has proportionally lower blood flow, slow, so subacute to chronic NSAID use can result in uh, ischemia that leads to slothing of the renal papillae. Renal papillary necrosis can also be due to pyelonephritis. I've seen one question where they showed you an actual light microscopy biopsy with neutrophilic infiltrate, po positive costovertebral angle tenderness, and the answer is renal papillary necrosis, okay? So it can be due to infection as well. Um, I should note tangentially, really quick, not to digress, but you should be aware that if the USMLA asks you point blank which part of the kidney is most susceptible to ischemia, the answer is the PCT, the proximal convoluted tubule, because of the high concentrations of transporters, the ATPase pumps. So acute tubular necrosis, classically just exsanguination, acute blood loss, or ventricular fibrillation, blood pressure goes to 80 on 40 acutely. Uh, renal 
uh, papillary necrosis is not going to be your answer. It's going to be acute tubular necrosis, okay? So there's a lot we can discuss. I know you want me to keep these clips concise. Choice E, rhabdomyolysis is our correct answer. So you need to know that you will get a false positive blood on urine dipstick in about half of rhabdo questions that discuss kidney related stuff. So when you have lysis of skeletal muscle, the myoglobin that's liberated into the bloodstream goes to the kidney, it's nephrotoxic. The urine dipstick cannot differentiate hemoglobin from myoglobin. So you're gonna have a positive blood on dipstick, but on light microscopy, there's no RBCs because there's not actual blood in the urine. And then you might say, but wait, I don't get it. Why are there three to four RBCs per high-powered field then if this is a false positive? I've seen that on 2CK surge questions. It, it need not be zero to one. Three to four is considered uh, considered negative. If USMLE wants positive, they're going to give you 20 to 50 plus cells per high-powered field for RBCs and for WBCs, okay? It's not my opinion. It's what I've seen in questions. So your first point is false rhabdo will cause a false positive blood on your dipstick. Three to four RBCs per high-powered field on late microscopy is considered negative. The other half of your questions that are renal-related for rhabdo will give you overt to Q-tubular necrosis. Myoglobin, nephrotoxic, you'll get oliguria, granular casts, okay, muddy brown or dirty brown granular casts, and they might not mention anything about the dipstick. They just say granular casts, okay? That's rhabdo. So I've seen uh, variations of this type of stem for rhabdo, but it's... They'll give you a young guy in his 30s. They'll give you an old woman in her 80s. And they're both found on the floor. It's weird, okay? But I think they want to be intentionally vague because they want you to uh, ascertain the diagnosis based on the urinalysis findings. So look, you know the deal. I'm going to make more content. I know you don't want to see 45-minute explanations. You want me to keep things concise here. So if you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.